blah. <laughs> All right, this one's called Rose, a Love Story. Directed by Jennifer Sheridan and written by the dude who also stars in the movie, Matt Stokey. That kind of looks a little like Robert Pattinson. Matt Stoko. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know how to pronounce anything if we haven't figured that out by now. Starring as Rose, Matt's real life wife, Sophie Rundle. Basically, Matt and Sophie, their characters live isolated in a land where it's always winter. I mean, not literally, but it's just cold. Forgot to turn on the light. <laughs> the problem is Rose suffers from some sort of terrible condition that causes her to crave blood. If she sees blood or smells blood, she goes blood crazy. She gets the blood fever and she's going to drink some blood and potentially transfer her nasty disease elsewhere. Her husband, Sam, keeps everything in check with leeches. It's perfect. The leeches suck Sam's blood they mash it up into a nice mash, and then Rose eats it. The perfect way to transfer the blood, I guess it might be easier just to, you know, use an IV bag and she could just make smoothies. But for whatever reason, dramatic or not, they use leeches. Maybe the leeches, like, sort of filter the blood in a way that, like, dull her cravings. Who knows? Their lives are very measured, down to Sam's rations for food. He can't even afford an extra bowl of oats to Amber, who shows up. She gets caught in one of the animal traps. Sam catches wild game when he can. They live a very meager sort of existence. Rose is writing a book. We don't know why, but she, that's just how she passes her time. And Sam, he hunts and traps, and he has a garden, despite it being winter. And they're happy in their very small life. But when Amber comes into play, and we meet her earlier, because there's this whole little subplot about they, they have a guy that brings them gas but he didn't show up they're suspicious quite clearly there's some sort of van helsing like collective that hunts creatures like rose which is why they have to live so off the grid they have to be very very careful about who they deal with and anything things go awry with the petrol he meets amber she comes around later she's from a, an abusive home and she gets her foot caught in this trap and she gets really friendly with rose and i'm not really sure where the movie is going at this point one thing that is very prevalent there's a metaphor they sort of become like a surrogate family but yet at the same time there's some sort of deeper sexual attraction between amber and rose going on but we never get to see it really develop. Sam is very much a surrogate father to Amber who got hurt. You know, there's this whole back and forth. Hey, we don't want you to tell people where we live or that you've seen us. Back and forth, back and forth. Amber's like, you aimed a gun in my face. And he was, you know, paranoid about who she was. In the end, they develop this sort of surrogate family unit bond. Sam and Rose almost feel like parents Sam being the overbearing father that knows what's best for her daughter. Rose being the easygoing mother. They get into a fight over food. Sam wants her to eat the rabbit. Rose says, don't eat it if you don't want to. Because of the injury from the trap, Amber reopens a wound that she sustained from the trap. And Rose catches sight of the blood. She does her little transforming thing and she's going after Amber. But Sam stops her. And again, I really saw the heavy-handed metaphor of a father willing to sacrifice himself for his kid. Because Sam ultimately puts his arm out for Rose to bite. And when she does, Sam is now going to become like her. In the chaos, it's Amber who stabs and kills Rose, leaving Sam to be the sole bloodsucker of the household. And of course, he rushes her and makes a meal out of her. It's a great, self-contained, small story. It left me wondering what was going to happen, where it was going to go. And ultimately, I'm sorry to say, despite its efforts, it ended up just being too little too late. One of those films where a million things happen in the last three minutes. Why couldn't those million things happen in the middle of the story a little bit earlier and let us see how they're going to play out? Which, in turn, leaves us with something that feels far more like a character study when that's not really what our audience expectations might be tempered for. Definitely worth checking out. 
It just didn't, I needed a little bit more at the end and I didn't get it. That's okay. I very much want to see whatever Matt writes and produces next. It's currently streaming on Showtime Anytime.